Thank you, I just wrote that song today. Not really. All right, well, it's just about time to get this thing started. So happy that you're here, keeping this company, fighting this fight, make, keeping America, America, and making it greater and greater and greater. We have a mortal enemy to defeat. So uh, let's stay on it. All right, let's see who's up. The guy who, the guy, the guy up there in Philly. Philly or Memphis? Oh, yeah, yeah, Philly. Yeah. Tom Trento. Michelle. We ready? Michelle. 
You ready for the first speaker or another song? What do we want? Another song? Another song. All right. You want a rowdy? Let's get rowdy. It takes a little bit to get over here. I just watched it, sir. Hi. Just, hey, what's going on? Oh! <laughs> what's up, man? Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. 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 Oh, this is a song that I wrote. Yeah, I'm right here, so I thought. Kind of a libertarian thing to it. Oh, you'll like it. Oh, you can put it here if you want to. I think you will, anyway, if you like rowdy. I'll watch them both if you want me to. I think you will. It's called Liberty. Who doesn't love liberty? She taking Jackson with 15 souls. Yeah, she's here. Liberty. 
All right, we can get started with some speakers. Thanks so much for coming, everybody. I'm Billy Bones. I'll be here all day. A couple tunes here and there. And, uh, here we go. Uh, excuse me, that's your chair. It may, it may it interfere with your oh, video. Hey, how about hey, another round of applause shot. for Billy Bones right here, ladies and gentlemen. Volunteer this time once again in beautiful Boca Raton, Florida. How's everybody out there today? Ready for some great information, some important information, stuff that will mobilize you as an individual, touch your head, touch your heart. Very serious situation, but we're here to have some fun. I will be your co-master of ceremonies. My name is Tom Trento, and I have with me the lovely Sofia Manalesco. Hey, say hello. Hello, thank you so much for coming here and supporting our cause, Jexit, Jews Exiting the Democrat Party. We are here to inform you. We are here to inform you about the rise of anti-Semitism, locally, nationwide, and internationally. So thank you for coming. Now we have uh, a lot of speakers. We're limiting everyone to five minutes so they can highlight what they're talking about. We have performances by, uh, by Billy Bones. We'll be recognizing individuals throughout the afternoon. We have kosher hot dogs, we have ice cream, we have all kinds of stuff, we'll tell you about that. But we're walking a very fine line here. This is, and this is a, a uh, disclaimer at the beginning, this is a non-partisan event. Jew hatred, anti-Semitism cuts through all political parties. This is a non-political event Though we may have people who have political backgrounds, all of that, they're here speaking as individuals. The best way to launch an event such as this is with a recognition of our national anthem. And is there anyone up here that has a saxophone that can play the national anthem? Here we go, Billy Bones in the national anthem. Good. All right, I thought we were going to do that later. who will be singing the Hatikva. Please welcome him. Just started. Die 
equipment up here, first class. If we crank it up, they'll be hearing it in Deerfield. But please do not touch the microphone. It's not a, uh, a, a you can't take the mic with you. You gotta speak into the mic here, he'll adjust it. Um, these two flags behind me represent uh, two of the most unique democracies in the history of the world. And we're here to recognize uh, the uh, contributions uh, by both and the contributions by the members of both of those countries. And do we have any members of this country that have, um, that have taken that oath and served in the United States military? If you, if you have, please stand up. We want to recognize you. Well, we have a member here who's a dear friend of ours, and um, he was uh, in WW2. He goes back a ways. And he's um, a dear Jewish friend of ours. Uh, he is going to lead us in the uh, in the pledge. Would you please warmly welcome our dear friend Morka? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. One nation under God. One nation under God. And I'd like to ask a representative of God, though he may not like to be introduced that way, but indeed he is a uh, a rabbi who today, later this evening, is celebrating 30 years of, um, of proclaiming the light of Judaism here in Boca Raton. The rabbi of uh, the Chabad of Boca Raton, Rabbi Denberg, please. Thank you, it's a privilege and an honor to be invited here. And I'm so glad and all of you should be thanked for being here, for helping this movement. And we know that it's not only going to be helpful for us, but it certainly will be helpful for all. I'd like to begin with a small prayer. Our God and our God of our fathers, great, mighty and revered. God, we beseech you that you in your abundant mercy restore the world onto its true basis with justice and righteousness, without discrimination between nation and nation, race and race. Bless our leaders' efforts to save this land and the neighboring lands from war and destruction wherever they turn in the cause of humanity. On behalf of this land and the benefit of the people of Israel, send the angels of blessing and success to welcome them and cause war and its calamities to be ended in an era of peace and justice with all its blessings should begin in our days. And let us say, Amen. Amen. No, I don't mind being introduced as a man of God. I only wish that I uh, can live up to that title. I'm just gonna share a couple of words with you. This coming month, the Jewish nation celebrates a holiday called Purim. And as a Jewish nation, when we drive our cars, it's important for us to look into the rearview mirror, to look into our past, and we notice something very interesting, that all that is happening today is nothing new. Because the holiday that we celebrate is a holiday that took place in Persia. And there was a king, his name was Achishverish or Xerxes. He had an advisor called Haman. And Haman convinced the king 
that there was an Am Echad Mefuzer to Mefura, there was this nation that somehow just seemed different, stood apart than everyone else. And it gives no other reason why he disliked these people so much, simply that they were different and not following the rule of thumb. And the story of Purim tells us one other important fact, that Haman, while he had such allegiance from all people bowing to him, there was one gentleman that refused to bow to him, and his name was Mordechai. So we learned two important things. That you can have almost everything in life, and there could still be one thing that bothers you that could be enough to nourish and nurture a hatred to people to the extent that you even are seeking their total annihilation. Just one person not bound to Haman, the fact that there was a nation that was different, enticed him to use all his powers of persuasion to persuade King Ahasuerus to rid his kingdom of the Jewish people. Today, as we begin this fight against anti-Semitism, I must tell you that anti-Semitism is not like a cold. A cold, they'll tell you, get some rest, drink lots of, lots of liquids, and it's going to go away. This will not go away by taking rest and drinking lots of liquids. If you have a lachayim or two, you might forget about it for a while, but it ain't going away. The only way for it to disappear is for people not to tolerate it. Don't ever fall prey to trying to explain any reason or foundation for anti-Semitism. There isn't one sound reason because it is simply wrong and hateful. So, starting today, each one of us need to commit that wherever you see injustice, if you see people challenging the right of Israel or any people to exist, we need to be a voice that's heard, we need to take action, and when you are the loudest voice of the, in the room, ultimately and eventually the other voices will disappear. Keep the spirit, be proud, be strong, and together, there's nothing like a united front, we will stop the hatred and the injustice to Jewish people, to peoples all over. Together we, what does it say? Together we are stronger, there you go. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rabbi Denberg. You may ask, how does a nice Christian boy like me wind up with all these Jewish women around me with the Jackson ladies? That's for another day. I'll tell you that story another day. But right now, we'd like to have the, uh, the, the team, Team Jackson, come up. If you can, Sophia, bring up your team. Can we please come up, Alexandra, Jody, Karen, Siggy. Ziggy Flicker, get up here, Come Ziggy. Up. Ziggy Flicker. And Michelle has an announcement for the team. Michelle, the founder of Jexit. Nothing would be possible without her creativity. Give her a loud applause here. And George, come on up as well. George, I, I wanted to uh, read a quote by Vince Lombardi. He said, the achievements of an organization are the results of the combined efforts of each individual. People who work together will win, whether it be against a complex football defenses or the problems of modern society. With that being said, it is with great pride and joy that we introduce the Jexa team. This day would never have been possible without their tireless dedication, friendship, love, commitment, and time. So please join me in welcoming them with a big applause. Siggy Flicker, our new member. Karen Basil, Karen with the Y. Why? Because we love her. Sophia Manalesco, Jody Steinlock, Alexandra Levine, Sidney Cantor, Sidney Goldenholz, 
George Galala, Biker for 45. And our partner, Tom Trento, MC, Master of Ceremonies, and he sells popcorn at halftime, Tom Trento. <laughs> All right, thank you, Team Jackson. Ziggy, get over here for a minute. Real Housewives of New Jersey. I'm from you saw that. Ziggy's an Israeli who has uh, joined the team. She will be our keynote speaker at the end. You don't want to miss this. Ziggy, give us a minute of uh, who you are and what you're going to do. Hello, everybody. First of all, give yourselves a round of applause for showing up. It takes a lot to come together for a country. My name is Siggy, short for Sigalit. I was born during the Six Day War in a bomb shelter, so it's very hard for me to come out of my shell. <laughs> um, my mother named me Sigalit, and I talked to this with the cantor um, after a violet flower in, in Israel. But when we moved to America, no one can, no one could say my name. They call me Ziggy, Squiggy, Siggy the Sea Monster, Miss Piggy, Cigarette. So I said to my mom, why do you give my sister the better flower name? Iris. <laughs> Everybody knew how to say Iris's name. But in any case, I was born in Israel and um, grew up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I'm gonna share with you my story later on. You don't want me to do my whole thing uh... now. No, but I wanna say how proud I am because this is not just a Jewish thing. Anti-Semitism, they try to fool you and think it's about the Jews, it's not. It's anti-American, it's anti-Christian, it's anti-God, it's anti our Constitution. That's what it is. So don't think it's a Jewish thing because we're 0.2% of the world's population. We're only 15 million, six of us in Israel. They are coming for all of you. That's why we need to stand up and say, I pledge allegiance to this country. They're not words, it's called action, which is why I started out by thanking you guys for even showing up today. God bless America and Am Yisrael Chai. I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll see you in a little bit, Ziggy. As I said, we have um, limits because we have so many diverse people. Five minutes, we have a timekeeper right in front. Five, one, stop. If you don't stop, Sophia will drag you off but we have two exceptions. The opening presentation, we're gonna let uh, the individual go a little more because it's critically important information. And our keynote, uh, she's gonna go about 10 minutes or so to wrap the whole uh, afternoon up. But years ago, and many of you may know what I do, I run an organization, The United West, an activism organization, pro-America, pro-Israel. Years ago, I saw a cartoon where a guy was walking in a little bubble, and it said, what can one person do? And he was kind of despondent walking by himself, except there were 10,000 people around him, all with the same little bubble, what can one person do? And on that day, looking at that cartoon, it hit me that one individual can do mighty things, particularly if they allow the power of God to work through them. You're gonna meet an ordinary individual that struggled with what can one person do, but said, with the power of God, I can do tremendous work. And that individual is the founder of Jexit, Michelle Terrace. Come on up, Michelle, please. Michelle. So as the rabbi said, we're, we're close to Purim, so I'm going to channel my inner Esther today. <clears throat> um, I am a very proud, second generation Jewish American girl. Uh, my grandmother fled the pogroms in Russia and she hid in haystacks while the pogroms came with pitchforks to kill everybody. And a Christian family hid her in the attic until she was able to make it to Ellis Island with potato sacks for shoes. They kissed the ground that they walked on. 
and they never looked back because they had freedom. And this freedom came with a high price. So for too long, we have sat back and depended on our local politicians and administrators to fulfill their duty by protecting our communities from ignorance and hate. They have failed us. Yeah, they, have. they have failed us because we've been sending the wrong message to them. They have failed us because we've come to accept the status quo of rising hate and anti-Semitism. They have failed us because we continue to support their local bids for office and handle them with kid gloves when they turn the other cheek to incident after incident of hate anti-Semitism and ignorance. History tells us time and time again, whenever the Jewish people become complacent, rudderless, the scourge of hate, anti-Semitism, and violence rises again to attempt to destroy any trace of us from this earth. In the past several weeks, I've presented in front of audiences the difference between old world and modern day anti-Semitism. I discuss the sources of their hate and why one has become more dangerous than the other. And I explained why modern day anti-Semitism is the one we must destroy right now. Modern day anti-Semitism is more insidious and more dangerous because it takes the essence of those old world views and makes it political. It wraps up and disguises hateful views with progressive ideas and politics, making it easier to spread and even teachable in our schools and colleges. It's become acceptable as a means to an end because we are in the way of their political goals and policies. Anti-Semitism is not only anti-Jewish, it's anti-Christian, anti-God, and anti-American, which is why we all must join in this struggle. Today, I am announcing a comprehensive plan of action put forth by Jexit that has already begun and has already garnered results, net results. First and foremost, Jexit has started working with the victims of anti-Semitism, bullying, and hate. When others fail them, we will be their beacon of light and provide them with an outlet for their stories to be heard and told and reminded and on record. This includes continuing to support and close cooperation with law enforcement community, plus working with local community officers to help solve the social issues of rising anti-Semitism, bullying, and hate. We will also be putting pressure on local municipalities to return the tools law enforcement need to effectively stop credible threats before they turn into acts of violence. However, if victims remain ignored, we will seek help on a state and federal level to ensure quality, consistent policing, and that arrests are made if crimes are committed within the guidelines of the Florida State Criminal Statute or federal laws if applicable. We will also be working closely with state legislatures, legislators to sponsor bills that will hold schools, school officials responsible from the very top officials down to the teachers. If they continue to fail to take action against anti-Semitic acts, help spread anti-Semitic ideas, or allow hateful rhetoric in their classrooms and schools, under the new laws we will seek, they will be terminated, yes. not able to be employed by the state of Florida and kicked out of the Florida pension system with no reimbursement. Jackson will also be working closely with the most talented civil rights law firms in order to hold any party responsible for anti-Semitic bullying or hateful acts. We will also be working with a multitude of political and social groups joining forces with many movements who have grown tired of the racism, anti-Semitism, bullying, and hate that has risen in this politically charged environment. Finally, Jexit has begun networking with Bikers for 45 who take part in rides for our fallen troops and bullied children, as well as local defense experts who are here today who specialize in defusing threats of violence or how to use justifiable force to quickly end an act of violence if a would-be victim is attacked. These experts will be making extra room in their classes for adults and children who have already been victimized. This country is just several weeks removed from Holocaust Remembrance Day and the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. The fact that we need to have rallies 
to bring awareness and put an end to this scourge is not only an insult to the Jewish people, but an insult to our greatest generation. It is an insult to the United States of America as a whole that we have to have this conversation on our own soil and ignore the sacrifices, the sacrifices made by our veterans. Our local communities, state, and nation need to wake up regardless of your religion, race, or political affiliation. And we need to stop supporting members of the House and Senate who spread anti-Semitism, <laughs> who stand side by side with extremist groups that hate the United States and Israel. And you show sorrow for eradicated terrorists who killed or named our troops and innocent civilians seeking freedom. We are in the fight of good versus evil for the soul of this nation. We have put personal views aside and hold those responsible to spread, spread anti-Semitism and ignore attacks on our children and adults and purposely allow anti-Semitism to continue due to their ideology. God helps those who help themselves. We must do our part in the fight against evil so that our young generation has a future. Never again is now. It's an honor and a privilege to introduce today a mother who didn't settle, trust, or believe that a swastika drawn on a wall in a classroom at Boca Raton Community School, high school, is considered freedom of speech. I say, not in my backyard. How about yours? Without further ado, we welcome, we stand with, and we give a voice to Yvonne Ricardo. was, what else? How long? Why didn't you tell me? Her answer was, I was scared. My next question, what have they said to you? You should have been burned in the oven, she replied. I was in disbelief. That I'm a dirty Jew. And of course, the Jew got the answer right. Imagine your child, your grandchild, or a great-grandchild sitting in my daughter's chair. Silent, scared, embarrassed, alone. No one, no voice to defend her. 
What do you do? Where, where should I go? I Googled it, don't we all? <laughs> Anti-Semitism in schools, nothing. There are no instructions on how to handle a horrific situation. So on January 8th, 2018, I met with the principal of Boca High School and the campus officer. I brought her aunt, Salma Weltman, also a Holocaust survivor, with me because I needed a witness, because witnesses are powerful. What happened next would change how I viewed the school system and America today. If the very people who we entrust to protect, to educate our children believe that a swastika is considered freedom of speech, we got problems. And kids, and, th and their response was, they're just being kids. And my response was, a swastika has no positive meaning. Why don't we just strap a gun to the swastika? It's considered a hate symbol. Can I put a noose on the wall, I asked. Their response was, no, you can't put a noose on the wall. What's the difference? Now it's when we knew, and I looked at her aunt, Salma Wildman, my tante, and I said, we got a problem. And you know what I said to the principal? You're never going to forget this space. So I asked you. So I asked you, anyone here thinks a swastika is freedom of speech? No. Do you? How about you, anybody? And that's why I'm here today, to be the voice for my daughter, who didn't want to come here today, why? Because she's embarrassed and she's scared. So I have this chair who represents the children all over the world, whether it's anti-Semitism, hate, whatever hate it is, that their voice is important. And I want to be the voice, not only for my daughter, but for all of your daughters and, and sons and grandkids, for everyone. So since no one wanted to hear me, or hear my child's voice, I decided to scream louder. Yeah. I, and I'm still screaming. I emailed every news station at 2 a.m. in the morning with the video, and guess what? One station reached out, one, CBS. And they were here by 9 a.m. They ran the piece by 6 p.m., amazing how a scream for a brief moment caught their attention. And I say brief moment caught their attention. This situation gave me the opportunity to get in touch with an old friend. Some people call it Kiddish, I'm sorry, Yiddish Kite. And Baruch Hashem, Michelle Lubin Terrace stepped into my life. Yeah. I stand before you today as the voice of my Jewish child and the one who is scared to be here. The child who didn't want to wear her Star of David that she wore so proudly every single day took it off. And I said to her, put that star on, put your back up, straighten yourself, look forward, and be proud to be Jewish. You are from a Holocaust surviving family. You need to stand up. If you don't stand up and I don't stand up, this is never going to end. Why? Because our voices are louder if we stand together. We can never forget what happened 75 years ago. And to make matters worse, on January 8th was Holocaust Week at Boca School. Imagine. It is our responsibility to continue to share their story. This can never happen again ever happen again. Who gives the right to any child or person or parent to share, to spread hate? Not in our classroom, not in our backyard, not in our community. We need to respect our everybody, whether you're Catholic, you're Jewish, you're Muslim, whatever it is, LGBT, whatever it is, you need a voice. And children's voices sometimes aren't loud enough. It is our responsibility as parents to advocate their safety, their rights, and their privilege 
the child that we speak in question, who drew the swastika. We'll never know what happened. Why? Because there's nothing written in the student code of conduct that deals with hate crimes. So when they said that there was swift action, I'm not sure how swift action occurs if you don't have a policy to follow. So if you don't have a policy to follow, nothing happens. And if we don't change this today, we are going to relive 75 years ago. And if that's something that we're looking forward to revisiting, we can't. We can't. It could never happen again. We need to stand together. We need to be the voices, not only for the children, but for the adults, the elderly, for everybody. This chair represents fear. How many children in our school don't have a voice? How many parents don't want to go that extra step? I'm Cuban. I'm going to take it to the end. I don't care. I don't care. So I want to thank you today. And I hope that this story leaves something behind. And it just shows us that no matter where we live, whether it's Boca Raton, West Palm Beach, New Jersey, it doesn't matter where we live. We've got to stop it. And don't allow empty chairs to ever be next to a speaker. She should have been here today, but she couldn't. Why? She was scared. So if you, we need to represent our children. Please don't let this happen again. Thank you, uh, Yvonne. What can one person do? Well, you saw what one person can do. She uh, got involved and contacted everyone, and Michelle Terrace, the founder of Jexit, found out about this and put this rally together. What can one person do? This is what one person can do. As a result of what you've just seen, as a result of Michelle and Jexit's work, Look, Here's a statement a I'm going to read from the Palm Beach oh, County favorite. Board of Education. Board of Education of Palm Beach embraces the opportunity to affirm the board's commitment to Holocaust education. The school board is and always has been committed to teaching students in all grade levels a historically accurate Holocaust curriculum one which leaves no room for erroneous revisions or fact of the scourge of anti-Semitism. The Palm Beach School District is one of the few school districts in the county to employ a full-time Holocaust administrator and curricula specialist. Pretty amazing, that is pretty amazing. That administrator name, they named the administrator. Maureen Carter is the recipient of the nationally recognized Robert I. Goldman Award for Excellence in Holocaust Education. Every generation must recognize and learn from the atrocities of the Holocaust's incomprehensible suffering and the enduring stain that it's left on humankind. It is only through high quality education and thought provoking conversations that history will not repeat itself. Our schools often welcome Holocaust survivors who teach children firsthand about their personal accounts of losing family members, being imprisoned in concentration camps, and the ache of loss that remains with them to this day. It is sobering to think that this generation of students will be the last generation to hear this poignant view firsthand. That is amazing, as that Holocaust generation is slowly leaving us. That fact is not lost on students. Throughout our district, children have planted and continue to nurture and cultivate Holocaust <laughs> memorial gardens. Oh, yeah. Activities such as this, in which students work side by side, foster tolerance and acceptance amongst students, various cultures and various religions. While gardens and other Holocaust projects and programs are essential to opening those young minds, the district's deepest roots are embedded in our man, and don't miss this, embedded in our mandatory 
Holocaust Core Curriculum. The Palm Beach County School Board is invested in and proud of our district's nationally recognized Holocaust curricula, which far exceeds that which has been mandated by the state of Florida in 1994. As a school board, the seven members set policy requiring that the mandated provisions be followed. The state sets provisions, the Palm Beach County Board says this county will follow those provisions. The school board is also dedicated to our value partnerships with various Jewish and Holocaust education centers. As a board, we're committed to doubling down educationally with school community visits geared at enlightening any student or staff who doubts or has any questions regarding the undeniable facts of the Holocaust. To those of you, and our personal note from the school board, to those of us here today, to those of you taking part in this rally, may what you say here today echo, and you can hear my voice echoing, may everyone's voice echo in the minds of those you enlighten for years to come. Continue to bring any concerns that you may have to our school board. And Frank Barbieri is the chair of that board. It is only through thoughtful conversation that we can continue to best serve the, ex the educational expectations and the needs of all students and the needs of this community. Words from the Palm Beach County School Board because of Yvonne and Michelle. Give them a hand and the school board. What an incredible message, everyone. We have such amazing speakers here today. I'm already moved, but we have to go on with the show. And we have amongst us a preeminent national security analyst, an unequaled Jewish activist, very well known in South Florida and nationwide, Mr. Joe Kaufman. Please give him a hand. Michelle, Jody, Tom, Jexit for inviting me to speak today. There were two major events in my life that changed the course of my life. One of them was 9-11. I grew up in New York and I, like many others, took it personally when the towers fell. Following 9-11, I devoted my life to fighting terrorism. However, I want to discuss with you the other major event that happened in my life. And that was when my college roommate put a swastika up on our dorm room wall. I had been no stranger to anti-Semitic attacks. All, through, all throughout grade school, kids targeted me for being Jewish. On a nearly daily basis, beginning in second grade, I was called Jewy and Dr. Jew. Kids repeatedly painted swastikas on my jackets in the cubbies. I was raised by my grandparents. Once my grandfather George came home, with matching dark blue winter coats for me and him. You can imagine my horror when I had to leave school with my brand new coat that someone had just painted a big white swastika on. I was in third grade. I sat on the stoop in tears, holding my coat in the dead of winter, waiting for my grandmother Ruth to pick me up. She was late. I remember it as though it were yesterday. She put down the window of our Chevrolet Caprice Classic Joey, why don't you have your coat on? It's freezing outside. You'll catch cold. I begrudgingly showed her the coat. We threw it in the garbage. My grandparents were clueless about what was happening to me. I kept it all inside, not telling anyone. The next morning, my grandmother went to speak to the principal, Mrs. Fadigate, concerning the incident. Mrs. Fadigate did nothing about it. I went over to my classmate Kenny's house. We would draw cartoons together. He was fascinated by Nazi symbols. He would draw them constantly. On the wall of his living room was a crystal swastika. He told me his grandfather was a Nazi and that his mother was Jewish. 
that he did not know her and that both he and his father hated her. Kenny now lives in Florida. Recently, I saw his mugshot online. <laughs> the kids would play a game called concentration camp during recess. I was the Jew. One day, Anthony, who is currently a DJ here in Palm Beach County, held me down, punching me in the face, calling me a Jewish piece of shit. Excuse my language. I went over to my great-grandparents' house in the Bronx. I was playing with a kid in my great-grandmother's garden. The kid told me that a dirty Jew lived there. He was referring to my beautiful great-grandmother, Esther. I truly thought there was something wrong with me. I would ask God, why are you doing this to me? In high school, I was ganked up by six people while walking home from school. I would always take a shortcut through the forest. They stopped me when I reached the top of a barbed wire fence pulled me down and beat me up, repeatedly calling me and my mother as well fucking Jews. I was sucker punched into a glass wall, my schoolmate claiming that a fucking Jew, me, spit on him. I woke up with him pounding on the back of my head under the stairwell. Thank God for my social studies teacher, Mr. Forand, pulling him off of me. Hit me instead, Mr. Forand screamed at him. I sat in class, red-faced and embarrassed as all my classmates stared at me. The kid who attacked me was expelled. I was on my high school basketball team. The star player of the team, Steve McMillan, threw me down three flights of stairs, yelling at me, fucking kike. I told the coach, but like Mrs. Fatigate, he did nothing about it. I received a Dregent scholarship that would pay full tuition if I chose a State University of New York or SUNY school. All throughout my crazy life, I still managed to get great grades. I loved being a New Yorker, but I refused the scholarship. I had to get out. I got accepted into the University of Maryland. I had close family in Baltimore, so I figured Maryland was a good choice. My first day, second semester, I had taken a train and then a bus to my dormitory. My roommate Craig and I were great friends, or so I thought. We would go to parties together, go on double dates together, drink together, I took my luggage up the, up the stairs to the third floor. My room was close to the stairwell. The door to my room was open slightly. I pushed it open, and to my horror, I was greeted by a big swastika on my dorm room wall. Craig was sitting at his desk with a book open. The light was turned off, but the sunlight from the window lit up the room. Craig, why? He did not answer me. It was like a ton of bricks had fallen on my head. Staring at the swastika, it was like time had stopped for me. All of the attacks against me and my family were cycling through my head. At that moment, I said to myself, for some reason, God wants me to go through this. And either I, either I can continue to go through this and continue to feel sorry for myself, or I could fight it. That moment, I decided to fight. The man that you know today, the man standing up here at this podium, is immensely proud to have gone through his horrific journey to get here. I do not feel sorry for myself. I do not hate my attackers. They made me a proud Jew. And I would not trade being Jewish or my beautiful religion Judaism or my amazing homeland of Israel for all of the riches in the world. To the Boca High student who recently suffered anti-Semitic bullying, or anyone who was attacked for being Jewish or Christian or Muslim or black or Hispanic or Asian or gay, know that you are not alone. But also know that what does not kill us only makes us stronger. Now fight and take back your world. Thank you. Rest in peace, Phil Haney, my friend. Thank you. friend for many many years done a lot together amazing guy uh, he's been through a lot give him another round of applause please 
Go Kaufman. You know, it's tricky uh, emceeing events like this because uh, any, any public event has an organic life. The emotions go here and there, and Joe just took us to a very serious place, a personal story of, um, of defeat on one level, but tremendous victory. And what he has done for this country in his national security work has simply been amazing. And you know, God is interesting because he takes broken pieces of our life and our background and welds them together to create an individual that can do much more than if we didn't go through some of these very difficult times. Thank you again, Joe Kaufman. But we're here to have a good time. We're gonna hear from Billy Bones in a few moments. Gonna have a little musical, uh, a couple of songs. We have bathrooms in the back if you need them. They're pretty clean right now. You gotta go, you know, now's the time to go. We have um, uh, all kinds of goodies over here, Hi Pops. They have handcrafted gelato and they will be donating that on your right over here, that van. They're gonna be donating a percentage of each gelato bar to the Team Jackson to pay for all of this. So please go buy a lot of gelato. And um, coming from a Sicilian person, gelato's tremendous, you wanna get that? Uh, also, if you're inclined to donate to Jexit, this event costs them thousands of dollars, these ladies, out of pocket. And uh, if you wanna donate, see one of the ladies and you can write them a check, they'd appreciate that. But um, as many of you may know, uh, I lead a, a tour, my group, United West, with Dr. Ronnie Wexler. Ronnie Wexler, are you around? Ronnie Wexler, are you around? Ronnie Wexler, could you stand up for a minute? That's Dr. Ronnie Wexler. Uh, he owns a tour company. We go to Israel every year, national security tour. This year we're going. We're going to hand out cards later. Um, Ambassador David Friedman will be briefing our group on the deal of the century. We go to Israel and we go right to the front lines, but today we brought Israel to you. We have an individual right now, Commander M. This is not just any Israeli. This is Commander M. Uh, I know him. He has served in the IDF. Yes. Not just in the IDF, in the Special Forces of the IDF, which is very unique. He served in the Israeli Police Force. He has handled counterterrorism for the government of Israel. And he owns a tactical school where he teaches you how to damn well defend yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander M. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for coming for this important event. It gave me like five minutes, I guess. I can get my message across in less than that. <clears throat> Today, anti-Semitism is no longer anti-Semitic. The source of the word anti-Semitic anti is against all the Semitic people, which means all people who came from Noah, sons, Shem, from the Bible time. That means Jews, Arabs, and other countries, other people. But there is no longer that concept today. Today, today there is a new concept, anti-Semitic. Concept of today is anti-Jewish, anti-Israeli. All boycott, boycott movements driven by radical Muslims and their supporters do not understand the consequences of their actions. I'm not afraid of ISIS or Jihad or another extreme radical organization. I'm afraid of the silence jihad. Look what is happening in Europe and why go so far? Look what is happening in Chicago, in Detroit, in Palm Beach, in Broward. The silent jihad is like cancer. They silently create demographic terror. And that's the biggest problem. At the 90s, the radical Muslim has already realized that they would not succeed in waging terror and religious compulsion in Islamic countries. So they turn to the West. Under the guise of poor people, they are infiltrating Western countries and squeeze, squeeze the Democrat lemons to the end. Convince all Democrats that their way of life is better. 
If their way of life is better, why did they leave the Arab states and move over here? In the 1990s, a ruling was issued by a senior Islamist who instructed them to overcome the West with quiet jihad, and so they did. If a nation don't remember her past, her present is poor, and her future is hazy. We must not forget, i say it again, we must not forget, and if somebody didn't understand, we must not forget. My whole family are Holocaust survivors. I'm a third generation of Holocaust survivors. My grandma was only 15, when Mengele selected the her to the right and her sister to the left, and she never saw her again. The horrors they went through and experienced there were so difficult, it must shock and re-echo in all of us till this day and the future generation. There is no place in the world for any extreme radicals. There is no room for anti-Semitism. And excuse me for what I'm going to say. If someone thinks he can succeed by appeasing and kissing asses of those who believe you should be destroyed, then he's wrong. <laughs> Guys, anti-Semitism is terrorism, and anyone who encourages or supports it is a terrorist by himself. Thank you very much. Guys, one more thing, personal thing. When I moved over here, I believed that I want to teach the Jewish community how to protect themselves. But I find out everyone needs this protection. I left some cards over there, next to the suitcase. If anybody want to learn how to protect himself. I second. I'm the other. Have a good day, guys. Talking about uh, protecting ourselves. Ironically, as Commander M is speaking, uh, Ashkelon is uh, under a rocket attack right this second in Israel. And if you've been over there, I mean, it's always a big deal if rockets are flying around, but the Israelis know how to handle it. It's not, it's not, not the end of the world, and don't let it keep you from going there, just the opposite. But keep Israel in mind right now, please. So we promised you good speakers, and we have good speakers. And our next speaker, if you're in politics, she can make you or break you. She is the extraordinary, fantastic WFTL 850 AM, Joyce Kaufman. Wow. Okay, let me give you my first two reactions. There are not enough people here. And then let me give you my second reaction. I got a news flash on my way up here that Senator Tim Scott predicted on Thursday that President Donald Trump will see a massive increase in his support from the black community on election day and that the increase is a support that could lead to a second term in the White House. Can we say the same about you? I'm afraid not. I'm afraid that I don't have that kind of confidence. That there are two kind of Jews in the world, and I think most of you know this. There are the Jews who are, were born into a family of Jewish heritage, but have a religion called liberalism. And then there are the Jews like us, who regardless of what we were born into, understand the difference between right and wrong, and to us, never again are not just two words. The mission of Jexit, or any group that is that has a soul for the protection of Jews, to fight back against anti-Semitism, and to make sure that our ally Israel is always honored in the manner in which this president honors it, our mission is to go out there and convince others. Do not accept this new attitude 
that we're not going to discuss politics at family dinners. And we're not going to talk about it when we're with people we know are, you know, died in the wool Democrats. I grew up in a yellow dog Democrat household. I know exactly what that looks like and feels like. And I'll tell you something else. There's not one Democrat left in that household. Not because I'm so powerful, but because the world has been so completely overtaken by a, a theology that espouses the destruction of the nation of Israel and really endorses the hatred of the Jewish people. So there needs to be 10 times as many people here today. It, the, you know, the odds on me turning up to any event and preaching to the choir and knowing 85% of the audience that I'm talking to get greater and greater as time goes by. This is that, that moment. You gotta seize this moment. Yeah. You gotta start making choices about how you're gonna talk about this issue, not with each other. It's nice to pat each other on the back. I've been doing that for the last 30 years in this marketplace. But I'm now committed to going and speaking in front of groups that absolutely hate me. And I've spent the last six months doing just that and turning down a lot of engagement for the people who I know are gonna stand there and clap when my name is announced. It's time for you to get out and have this discussion with people who don't wanna hear it and don't back down. And by the way, I'm just gonna add this because no Joe is not my husband and no Joe is not my brother and no Joe is not my cousin, but Joe is my dear friend. And Joe, if you had delivered that speech in the last election, yes! you would have been a congressman. Yes! Thank you. I didn't know there were people that didn't like Joyce Kaufman. That's amazing. She's been here for a long time doing great work. And as I said, we have tremendous speakers. The next speaker is uh, an evangelical woman. I'm an evangelical Christian. Amazing lady who has a role with the United Nations and has a, uh, a pro-Israel organization. And she's a internationally known. But before we bring her on, we're gonna bring Billy Bones back for a couple of songs so you can go to the bathroom, get something to eat. We want you to relax, sit back, and uh, we're, we're just getting going here. So ladies and gentlemen, Billy Bones once again. I think we have a little issue with the sound system. Hold on. One this side's out.
I think she didn't need a microphone, really. She <laughs> That's power. Great power. Wonderful. All right, here's a tune uh, you probably will recognize. <laughs> Thank you very much. He'll be back. We're going to have a few more speakers. He'll be back. Uh, thank you, Billy, so much. A lot of people of faith, if you can come back, we uh, are going to reassemble here. Come back quickly, please. There's a lot of people of faith here. And in some faith traditions, you, uh, you believe in angels. How many people believe in angels? How many people believe in guardian angels? 
We got some guardian angels in real life here today. Come on the stage, please, our guardian angels. Let's give a round of applause to two of America's guardian angels. Here they are. And um, as I speak right now, courtesy we're in the, in the New York City Garden Angels to bring Crown Heights patrol in the Jewish community. And for the first time in New York City, a team of Jewish Guardian Angels took the streets of New York City last night. First, first of all, we the Jewish Guardian Angels. We went in there and sold them. We started in New York City uh, with the Jewish community since the early 80s. I led my patrol downtown. And I'm uh, sorry, led my led my patrol downtown in New York City in 1980, patrolling the Jewish community. And from Crown Heights on um, the rise, I was out with Crown Heights, I was there also for that. And now I'm here in South Florida with a chapter of the Guardian Angels. And every week we, we are patrolling um, in our, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not used to speaking. So in, uh, in Coral Springs, uh, we out there at the uh, Jewish Kabbas, um every single Saturday, just about every single Saturday, and uh, we offer free um, security and make sure that everybody is secure. Thank you. If you want to get in touch, they'll be over here. You can uh, contact them for any information. If everybody can come back and get uh, reseated, get your kosher hot dogs and your gelato, uh, it's good to have guardian angels. And we're here for the issue, obviously, of anti-Semitism, Jew hatred, but hatred across the board. And uh, I, have, uh, I have a few people in my life that I, I look up to, mentors in different areas. And one of them happens to be here this afternoon. And if I gotta go to war, and I, we, I, I am in war, um, this guy and I have been fighting together for probably 10, 15 years. And um, I know we'll both continue until uh, it's our time to depart the earth. But um, one of the foremost Zionist battlers I've ever seen in my life, I'd like him to come up here and say a uh, couple of words, Mr. Allen Bergstein, please come on up on stage. Last Sunday, a week ago today, is everybody listening? Listen to this, you're not gonna believe this. Listen, no, it's Sunday. Is it Sunday? When? No. Hey, listen to this. Everybody listen carefully. Last Sunday, you're not gonna believe this. Last Sunday, I gotta be careful, nobody's watching. Last Sunday, Alan and I went undercover the FAU, and we sat in a two-hour Bernie Sanders presentation on the ABCs of socialism. Unbelievable. Before we went, we, we do this stuff, the United West. Before we went, I told Alan, you got to be cool. you got to play your part. I was a New Jersey truck driver, right? you got to be cool. You can't. Within five minutes, the guy goes, are you in the CIA? He's asking, you're asking me all these questions. But then Alan regrouped and we spent two hours listening. Unbelievable. Say hello to the folks. Uh, I was unprepared. I, I wasn't prepared to speak. I was willing to sit in the chair. But thanks, Tom, for having me. I happen to be a Jewish umbilical cord Democrat. I was born into a socialist Marxist family in Brooklyn. I worked for the FDR campaign in 1940 as a kid. Now I know better. I've been a Republican for years, and although this is a non-partisan group, supposedly, uh, I am a firm Trump Jewish Republican. I will fight for it. Those of you who live in gated, guarded world communities, where the communities are run by boards that are radical leftist Jews, I sympathize with you. But you've got to stand up and fight. You've got to go to your discussion groups, you've got to go to your community things. You've got to stand up and say, listen, tell me what Trump has done as a Jew. Tell me what Trump has done that bothers you about Israel, about the Jewish community. Rather, you should stand up and say, look at the Democrat Party, now run by Ilhan Omar, by Rashida Tlaib, 
by Alexandria Cortez Ocasio Cortez of New York City, the Democrat Party, and I'm not being political now because Tom knows I'm never political. The Democrat Party now is an outright, overt, totally Jew-hating party, a, public, a, a, a political party. And I don't like the term anti-Semitism because it's too non-sectarian. It is Jew-hating. If you're a Democrat and you're a Jew, you're basically calling for the destruction of your children, your grand grandchildren, and your heritage. If you're Jewish or if you're a Israeli supporting, Jew supporting Christian, you've got to stand up and you've got to have, and I hate to say it, you've got to have a pair of balls. You've got to speak up to those Jew haters in your community, even though they say they are for Israel, the J Streeters, and the radical leftist Jews, you've got to stand up to them and say, listen, I oppose you, and you're my neighbor, you're my friend, you're my relative, but I will fight you tooth and nail because I want Israel to continue to live and I want my people here in this community, Boca, Delray Beach, wherever, to stand up and live forever as Jews without being fearful. It's time, it's time we stood up and said finally, never again, because my last words, my hero, in the 1960s was Rabbi Maya Kahane. I was a JDL supporter and I was a JDL member forever. I had my ring home, I would have brought it today, but it's in my safe. But you must stand up and fight and do not take any more crap from your neighbors, friends, and relatives. Tom, thank you. Um, we're going to hand out a little later. I, I host a uh, daily radio show on WNN 1470. Live show every day, five days a week. We cover all this sort of stuff. And before and after the show, they have a disclaimer. The opinions about this show don't reflect the, the organization. So I have to do disclaimers uh, before, before and after Alan goes anywhere. Uh, but uh, clearly one of the great fighters out there. Another fighter on the other end of the spectrum, on the younger side of the spectrum is a dear friend of, uh, of ours. Um, we've taken her to Israel several times. She uh, is a preeminent activist. You've seen her work all over the place, particularly when she confronted Nancy Pelosi with her own policies by bringing illegal immigrants onto one of Nancy's mansion vineyards in Napa, Sonoma, and camped out there and said, uh, we're welcoming all the immigrants here. That made national news, as did much other. Then she decided to take her work within the system and, and run for a political office. She's not representing any of that here today. She's a Jewish Zionist woman, woman par excellence, and a dear friend with a gigantic heart, but with more courage than most men I've ever seen. Please welcome Laura Loomer. Thank you so much, Tom, for that wonderful introduction, and thank you to Michelle and Sophia and all the organizers of Jexit for hosting this wonderful event. My name is Laura Loomer. I'm 26 years old. I'm a conservative Jewish investigative journalist, and I have dedicated my career to fighting Jew hatred and to exposing those who spread the cancer of anti-Semitism. Along with being an investigative journalist, I also happen to be the most banned, censored woman in the country. Literally, I am banned on every single social media site, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, PayPal, Uber, Lyft, Uber Eats, right? I'm not even allowed to order a sandwich. It even went so far as Chase Bank shutting down my online access to my bank account. And you may be wondering why I was banned. I was banned for exposing Jew hatred. I was banned and silenced for confronting and exposing Ilhan Omar. And if you look at these signs that were created and passed out today and used in the promotion for this rally, it says, we speak for the six million Jews who had no voice. They had no voice because they were silenced. And when we look back at the Holocaust, we must remember that it didn't begin with death camps. 
It began by list making, boycotts, and the marginalization and dehumanization of Jewish people in society. The Holocaust began with bans of Jewish businesses, financial blacklisting, name calling, and labeling. The Holocaust began with social and institutional acceptance of unchecked bigotry that was driven by both the state and the media, very much so like is happening today, which served as the distributor for genocidal propaganda that the masses consumed. The Holocaust is one of the worst atrocities in human history. We say never again. And still today, many look back and wonder how something so evil could happen less than 80 years ago. The answer is silence. In the face of all evil, many choose to look away and make excuses. People who otherwise could have voiced opposition to genocide chose to remain silent instead of speaking out. The behaviors that led to the Holocaust are very similar to what is happening to Jews today. It's very similar to what the radical left and social media companies are doing to conservatives today. Put simply, the radical left, which dominates and controls Silicon Valley, is creating digital gulags for wrong thinkers and undesirables. The left will continue to send conservatives to digital gulags until they can once again put us in a real gulag. In a way, one could argue that conservatives are the new Jews, and they are experiencing a digital Shoah. In fact, I warned about this phenomenon in September of, last, of 2018 during the congressional hearings when Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg testified in front of Congress. You may have seen it on the news, but I disrupted the congressional hearing and I confronted Jack Dorsey on September 5th during the hearing regarding social media censorship when he lied to Congress and said that Twitter doesn't censor conservatives. I made a personal plea to President Trump and I warned him. I warned him as one of his supporters and as somebody who has been victimized by these companies and has watched many of my friends and colleagues be victimized, many of you, everyday Americans who may not necessarily have my soapbox, be victimized and targeted by these social media companies. And I warned that these companies would continue to censor and ban all of his supporters in an attempt to influence the, the midterm and presidential elections, which we are now witnessing before our eyes in 2020. As Americans and as members of the global human race, we made a promise when we said never again. But today, I'm not so sure that never again really means anything. Today we see increased levels of Jew hatred. We have Jew haters serving in Congress who have ties to Hamas and ISIS, people who openly demonize Jews. And we have a Democrat party that normalizes this vile anti-Semitism under the guise of diversity and criticism of Israel. Today we have boycotts on Jews that are growing more common with the mainstream effort to normalize the pro-terror BDS movement. Social media companies are banning Jews and conservatives like myself while they allow for people like Louis Farrakhan and designated Islamic terrorist organizations like Hamas, ISIS, and the Muslim Brotherhood to incite hatred and violence against Jewish people. Companies like Facebook and Twitter claim to be against hate speech and they have banned Jews like myself and Yair Netanyahu, the son of Bibi Netanyahu, who has, Yair has actually endorsed my congressional campaign. And they banned us, just think about that, banning the son of the Prime Minister of Israel for posting facts about Jew hatred and terrorism. But it doesn't take much to see that these companies just purely hate Jews. The Holocaust happened only 75 years ago. It could easily happen again, especially if the Jews don't wake up and stop voting Democrat. The Jews need to make a choice. Will they stay silent or will they speak up? In 2018, according to FBI statistics, hate crimes against Jewish people increased by 37%. 2018, that also happens to be the same exact year that Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib, the first Muslim women, were elected to the United States Congress. I don't think it's a coincidence. <laughs> to put things into perspective for you, for those of you who like numbers, there's only 15 million Jews left on the planet. Compare that with the nearly 2 billion Muslims. 
Despite the fact that Jewish people are the minority, their rights have been overshadowed and hijacked by those on the left who spew the false narratives that Muslims are the minority. You can do the math yourself. The numbers aren't good. I was permanently banned from Twitter for life on November 21st, 2018, and then I was banned for 30 days from Facebook on Thanksgiving Day, less than 24 hours later. What was my offense? Did I spew hateful, violent rhetoric towards anyone, as we frequently see leftists and celebrities and far-left politicians do on these social media sites? No. Did I post racist comments or call for genocide against a group of people? No. Did I incite a riot or call for the president to be assassinated like leftists often do on Twitter? No. I merely shared a fact. Yes, the truth can now get you banned from life for the internet, it can get you banned from your bank, and it can get you financially shut down and blacklisted in the United States of America under the presidency of Donald Trump, right? In America, the land of the free and the only country that has a First Amendment right. The tweet that Twitter decided to ban me for was a tweet full of facts about Sharia law. It was a tweet directed at Ilhan Omar, a newly elected congresswoman, a politician, a public figure, a jihadist. And my tweet, my tweet pointed out her support of Sharia law and that it didn't make her an ally for gay people, women, Jews, Christians, as Twitter would like you to believe. This was the tweet that I was permanently banned for. Isn't it ironic how the Twitter moment used to celebrate women, LGBTQ, and minorities is a picture of Ilhan Omar. Ilhan is pro-Sharia, Ilhan is pro-FDM. Under Sharia, homosexuals are oppressed and killed, women are abused and forced to wear the hijab. Ilhan is anti-Jewish. Exactly, it's all true, right? Where's the lie? But that was the tweet that led to my deplatforming and digital extermination by the most powerful tech companies in the world. So. I did. <laughs> As a journalist, I always ask questions and seek the truth. As an American, I have been granted free speech protection, protections under the First Amendment to express myself as a citizen and a member of the press. I wanted to know why Ilhan Omar supports brutal and un-American things like Sharia, which supports female genital mutilation, the killing of homosexuals, and the abuse and oppression of women. I want to know why she hates Israel and why she makes so many anti-Jewish comments. I want to know why she refused to condemn Hamas, a designated Islamic terrorist organization. All of these behaviors are supported in Islam, and they are enforced under Sharia law, which both Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and it appears the entire Democrat party now supports and believes in due to their own refusal and their complicit nature with these women. In response to my Twitter ban and Silicon Valley Sharia, I handcuffed myself to the Twitter headquarter office in New York City on November 29, 2018. When I handcuffed myself, I wore a yellow Judah star, identical to those worn by Jews in the time leading up to the Holocaust. Just like the Nazis made lists of political dissidents who they marked and banned with yellow stars, Facebook, Twitter, and Google are modern day techno-fascists in the way that they are silencing conservatives, Jews, Christians who dare to speak the truth about radical Islam and terrorism. During my protest, while I was handcuffed, I held up a sign that read, Jew hatred, A-OK, -okay, nosy Jew banned. Twitter, Facebook, and Google have some serious explaining to do regarding their terms of service. As I mentioned, following my Twitter ban and Facebook bans, the left wing and Islamic bias displayed by these social media companies is overbearingly obvious and it is becoming so every single day. Less than 24 hours after I was banned by Twitter, I was banned by Facebook for 30 days and then I was permanently banned by Facebook on May 2nd, just one day after Holocaust Remembrance Day. How is it that a Jewish conservative journalist and the Israeli Prime Minister's son get banned on social media for posting facts about Islam, but Hamas and Hezbollah and the Muslim Brotherhood and Louis Farrakhan and Iranian dictators who chant death to Israel and death to America all have verified Facebook and Twitter accounts? I would love to know the answer. 
Through their pro Sharia terms of service, Facebook and Twitter are clearly signaling that it's okay to be a terrorist, but it's not okay to be a conservative or a Jew. Here are some evidence that big tech social media companies are anti-Jewish. Companies that you yourself are using, your children, your grandchildren, and your future children or grandchildren will definitely be using. In July 2018, Mark Zuckerberg sparked outrage when he said he didn't see a reason to ban Holocaust deniers on Facebook. Meanwhile, he finds it very necessary to ban conservatives and Jews. On May 2nd, when he banned me, he labeled me a dangerous individual, classified me as a digital terrorist, and then Facebook changed their terms of service to say that it was okay to kill people and incite violence against those who were deemed dangerous individuals. But ISIS still has a Facebook page. I'm not making this up. This is happening in America. In October of 2018, Twitter released a statement saying it was not a violation of their terms of service when Lois Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam, called Jewish people termites. Twitter said that they would not ban Farrakhan even though he has called for Jews to be eradicated and publicly proclaimed that Hitler was a great man. In November of 2018, Twitter was forced to apologize after they allowed for kill all Jews to trend for several hours. You get the point. We have a serious problem in our country. We have a problem with free speech, something that the mother of the students from Boca is dealing with right now, something that all of you, including myself, will continue to deal with if we continue to allow ourselves to be silenced, if we continue to allow for these techno-fascists in Silicon Valley and the Jew haters in the Democrat Party to silence Americans, to silence Trump supporters, and to silence Jews. Thank you. And so even while being banned and silenced on every social media platform, I am here today to tell you that one person can make a difference, right? And the only person who can really decide whether or not you are eternally silenced is you. So always use your voice and always use your voice to speak out against Jew hatred so that when we say never again, we mean it. Thank you. If you haven't seen her videos of calling out the swamp, you really need to take a look. She is awesome. Give her another hand. Come on. Okay. We have a couple of acknowledgments here today, some great people. We have uh, Robert Weinrock, Palm Beach County Commissioner. Where is he? Please stand up if you're here. And we also have Jesse Melton, who's running for office, District 22. Give her a hand. And of course, our next speaker, Evangelical Christian, serves on the United Nations Council, has uh, her organization proclaiming justice to the nations, an amazing human being here for us today, Lori Cordoza Moore. Please give her a hand. All right, Laura, thank you for such an encouraging speech and reminding us about the power of one. My name, as you know, is Lori Cardoza Moore. I don't know if you've heard about proclaiming justice to the nations, but our mission is to educate Christians about their biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and defend the state of Israel against the rise of global anti-Semitism. You are welcome. We accomplish our mission as a 23-year veteran of media. We accomplish our mi mission by producing award-winning documentary films and television programs that broadcast in over 200 nations, reaching over 2 billion potential viewers every week with a message for Christians to stand with Israel and our Jewish brethren. And ladies and gentlemen, as Bible-believing Christians, we believe God made a covenant to Israel, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their descendants forever. That is non-negotiable. Even with the rise of anti-Semitism today as we see it, even within the evangelical Christian churches and mainline denominations, we are not going to stand back and allow what happened in Germany to happen again. So here's the story of the power of one. There was a woman who is a member of our organization 
who contacted me one day and she said, you're never gonna believe what we're teaching our children in our textbooks. I said, try me. She brought over a textbook. Her son came home from school this day, Williamson County, conservative community, one of the wealthiest Republican communities, top 10 in the country. She brought to me a Pearson published textbook. How many of you are familiar with Pearson? Oh, some, but the rest of you, you're gonna hear what Pearson is doing with our children. We're worried about what's happening today. Ladies and gentlemen, our children aren't going to know what a constitutional republic is. In fact, they don't know. She brought me a textbook that had a quote in it that legitimized Palestinians blowing themselves up in a Jerusalem restaurant because they were waging a war against Israeli government policies and army actions. She brought me a paper, a resource paper, that her son was to use to write a report. The sources cited were all Arab terrorist organizations. Not one Israeli, not one Jewish. We launched a major campaign because one mother decided to take action. Because her son came home and said, Mom, who has legitimate rights to the land of Israel? She says, you know, this is an evangelical Christian family. He's, she says, what does the Bible, Bible say? She says, no, Mom, I know what the Bible says but who really has legitimate rights. Well, let me tell you something. The long, or the short and the long of that story is we launched a local media campaign. And I know that there is one individual here who came up to me and said he's running for school board. This is the importance of the power of one. We launched a media campaign in our community to tell parents the low-hanging fruit who were listening to conservative talk shows like Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, yeah. Glenn Beck. Yeah. We ran commercials telling parents, by the way, do you know what your kids are learning today? We had to get parents to show up at a school board meeting in a couple of weeks. We drove them to the website, we signed them up, they showed up in mass because there was a text, that textbook that had that quote, we told the school board we wanted it out. Well, they were voting that night on whether they were gonna keep it or not. We packed the school board meeting, standing room only. Yeah. And parent and citizen after parent and citizen got up and spoke and said, we want this textbook out. It is historically inaccurate, it's biased, and it does not reflect the values of our community. Not only did we find anti-Semitic content, no, ladies and gentlemen, we found anti-American, anti-Judeo-Christian, unconstitutional pro-Islamic content in the textbooks that crossed the line because it was teaching the tenets of the Islamic faith. But if our kids come up and say, well, when are we gonna learn about Christianity or Judaism? The response from the teacher was, you already know about those religions, really. We ended up at that meeting, they voted that night to keep that textbook. And I told them, last person to make a statement, I said, this is an election year. You hear me? It's an election year. And if you don't get rid of this textbook, we're gonna remove every one of you from office. Now that was a bold claim, but you know what? That was in April when we launched the campaign. By August, time to vote for those school board members. There were six up, and we brought all six down. The power of one person. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you know your school board members? How many of you know your county commissioners? Your city aldermen? We're all focused on Washington, D.C. in the presidential race. Ladies and gentlemen, the Muslims, the Islamists, are focused on 5,000 candidates running. And guess where the majority of them are running? Democrat. Local school board, county commission, city alderman, your school board holds
holds the keys to the future of our constitutional republic. And we, as our generation, and we were raised in public schools and taught this, the responsibility of every generation is to turn this constitutional republic over to the next generation. Pass the baton. But our kids don't even know what a constitutional republic looks like. I'm here to ask you, go to our website, pjtn.org. Sign up to get on our mailing list because we're getting ready to launch a statewide campaign, media campaign, on conservative talk shows and radio commercials to tell parents and citizens in Florida, guess what? Our governor, Ron DeSantis, thank God, you all know, passed a law basically embracing or endorsing the definition of anti-Semitism. And Governor DeSantis doesn't know that his curriculum in the schools is in violation of that law because there is anti-Semitic content in our public schools. So ladies and gentlemen, I wanna thank you. I hope that you've heard what I've had to say and I hope you all will consider running. Our government, Local 2, is by we the people, not by politicians who make a career out of destroying this country. God bless you and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Lori Cardoza Moore. All right, we've got a couple of um, housekeeping uh, recognition items. We're coming to the our last few speakers. Then we'll see Ziggy. Ziggy's over here. Where's Ziggy? Ziggy in the house? There, uh, she's right here. She's over here. She'll be up in a little bit. But if if these folks here, we need everybody to move back. This is for we're staging the speakers here. So if you're not involved with the speakers, if you can move back a little bit over there. Number one, uh, we have uh, Bikers for Trump here. Where are those guys? <laughs> bikers for 45, tremendous guys that are always around. And ladies, both of them, they're here. Uh, Sharona Whistler, ZOA, I think she was here earlier. I saw her. Um, so, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see any other folks. We'll uh, get Our state committee woman from Broward County is here, Michelle Merrill. <laughs> If we've missed you, you've apologized. If you think you're anybody, come over here and tell somebody over here and I'll mention your name, all right? You know, whatever. Uh, but the next guy is somebody. Dear friend, one of the hardest working individuals I've ever seen, activists. Uh, he came with us on our trip last year to Israel. His life, as everyone who comes on our trips, was turned around. And if our guys can pass out cards in a little bit for that trip, that's important. And uh, he is a, a Christian activist. In fact, his uh, organization is Christian on a Mission, focuses on the pro-life issue primarily. A supporter for that, the good guy that's running, we're trying not to be political here, for the good guy that's running, please welcome another naturalized citizen from Cuba, please, Willie Guardiolo. Good afternoon, how's everybody doing? My name is Adam Schiff, and I'd like to welcome everybody here. Hey, nobody leave. Just kidding, just trying to make a little bit of a humor here. What a great turnout, great speakers. Lori, Laura, thank you so much. Like Tom said, last year, I went to Israel for the first time in my life, and it was just an amazing trip, what we uh, got to see, not only the religious sites, but all the uh, border security, etc. The amount of speakers and it was just terrific, and this year we're going to have David Friedman on board. So I'll be back again on May 18th. It's an 11-day trip, and if, if uh, anybody's interested, see us here uh, during this uh, event. I am also the chairman of all the Trump rallies in Palm Beach County. We have 10 locations here from both all the way up to Jupiter, and of course our famous Trump Corner, PJ and Military. Who's never heard of Trump Corner? Raise your hand. If you have you're living in the cave of the but the, uh, uh, what's his name, Bin Laden, all right? We do have some big rallies coming up this coming uh, Friday. We'll be at those 10 locations starting at 4.15 to 5.45.
Think about what uh, happened here at this park for about three years in a row, going back uh, five years ago. There was a uh, satanic display here next to the uh, beautiful Christian uh, Catholic um, nativity uh, scene and also by the Jewish menorah. People try to knock that Jewish menorah down. And that, um, that satanic uh, Christmas symbol was brought out here by an eighth grade teacher. It was a middle school teacher that brought this out here three years in a row. And a couple of years ago when I said, this guy's coming back out here again to put it right here in the middle of this park, I said over my dead body. I called liberal Lois Frankel, I said, we're coming in a couple of weeks here. We're gonna take that thing down and we're gonna pray it out of here. 250 people showed up here. And during that event there, we took that satanic symbol out of this park here and it will never come back here again. All right, so think about that. If anybody ever sees anything like that that's going on, especially next to a Jewish menorah, let us know because we'll be out there and knock it out here. So once again, thank you so much for coming out here today. It's uh, really an honor and uh, I have such a love for Israel, mostly because our President Trump has that love for Israel. So thank you very much, Shalom. God bless you. Take care. For those of you who don't know, I also am a naturalized citizen, and my family fled communist Romania, and isn't it something that I come to the United States and we have a socialist running on the Democrat side? So that's just not right. But we were saying we have to fight anti-Semitism, and sometimes when you speak up for yourself, things can get a little rough, and you should know how to defend yourselves. So we have here today someone who's not only an attorney, but he's a Krav Maga expert. Please give a hand to Mr. Mark Astor. Hi, can everybody hear me? So nice to be here amongst uh, friends in Boca. I've, uh, thank you. Thank you. I've, I've lived here in Boca for 30 years. Came here from England. Also, I'm a naturalized citizen. Came here from England right before my 21st birthday. I'm now 53. I, I know I don't look it, but I am. And it's, it's good to be amongst friends. But I will tell you, this this makes me a little sad, especially especially when I see these badges. Um, when I grew up in England, my friends, we, we, used to, we used to fight with the skinheads, okay? I remember coming out of Temple on Yom Kippur and being spat on, okay? And I sometimes feel that especially here in South Florida, we live in a bubble, right? I come across many Jewish friends and they don't understand what it is to experience anti-Semitism. And I once got into a discussion with a friend of mine about the whole sort of Israeli-Palestinian thing and his response to me was, well, if the Jews aren't wanted there, why don't they just leave? Leave? Frankly, that was a little bit shocking for me. And I can tell you, as I, when I was growing up as a kid, I had a very good friend of mine. Her father was a Holocaust survivor. And before his mother passed away, she shared the story with me of how the Nazis came into their home and took six of her children out into the street and shot them dead in front of her. And only by the grace of God that he had blonde hair and blue eyes did they not think he was Jewish and they let him go. And his, what was left of the family, they fled to England, joined the British military, but he was also a very strong advocate for Israel. I grew up in an Orthodox family where men and women sat separately in temple. And my grandfather, who I was very close with, gave me the wonderful gift of Zionism. And while I don't consider myself a religious practitioner, I am very passionate about Israel. I'm also very passionate about being Jewish, and it's very important to me. And I decided many years ago that never again meant something to me. It's not appropriate to experience anti-Semitism and do nothing about it. And I'm not advocating violence, but sometimes good people have to use violence against bad people that want to use violence. And so many, many years ago, I decided to start training in the martial arts. And frankly, most of the stuff that's out there is completely useless and will not save you. And I include in that most of the Krav Maga that's being taught, most of that's useless too. But about 17 years ago, I had the opportunity to find somebody who could teach real, authentic Krav Maga. The kind of stuff they teach the Israeli military, the special forces and anti-terror units. 
I didn't know it's real crumb I got because I went through and trained to make sure it was real. And so what I'm here to tell you is whether you're Jewish or not Jewish, if you're passionate about your own safety for whatever reason, take it upon yourself to learn to defend yourself, to survive a violent attack. I see we have members of the law enforcement community here. I was a prosecutor for many years right here in Palm Beach County. I worked for Barry Christian, who's an Orthodox Jew. Uh, my fiance, who is here. Uh, we have friends and family in law enforcement, and we're big, friend, we're big fans of law enforcement. But the bottom line is that they can't always be there to protect you. And so if you want to learn to survive a violent attack, okay, against somebody who would do you and your family harm, whether they are carrying a knife, a gun, a stick, they have friends, or all of the above, then I'm going to implore you to take action and learn how to defend yourself. So if you want more information about what we do, teaching real, authentic Krav Maga, you go to school in Pompano, but I'll, I will come anywhere in Florida, if you can get me 10 or 15 people, and I'll come for a day or two days with my instructor, and we'll teach you how to, how to defend yourself and survive a violent attack. Thank you for coming out. I also want to say thank you to Michelle for organizing this, and a special thank you to Tom Frento, who is possibly the strongest advocate for Jews in the state of Israel anywhere. So with that, thank you very much for your time. All right, we're going to hear, uh, here's where we're going. Here's the rest of the program. Um, we got probably about a half hour left, so don't go anywhere. We're going to give you a rock and a roll in rendition of a very well-known song in a second. But as is these organic events, people come and go, and, and they want to they wanna say hello, and people running for office want to say hello. And the organizers have really tried to, walk that balance between recognizing good people because we always want people running for office and not becoming you know, a political campaign. So I'm bringing two people up here right now, L.A. Jones running for office. If you want to find out, go see her and Jesse Melton, both of them. You got 30 seconds each to say hello. Jesse, she's running for office at L.A. Jones. Here you go, 30 seconds. He doesn't know how much damage I can do in 30 seconds, but I'm gonna let you know. My name is L.A. Jones, and I'm a fourth generation black American. The importance of me here today is the fact that the two most hated groups who suffered the most in this country are the Jews and the black Americans during slavery. Now, what is our purpose? My purpose is not just running for office. My purpose is we have to unite this country. We have to unite each and every one of us. We have to stand tall for the President of the United States because that is the only way, the only way we're going to take Congress back and unite the United States of America. And I am L.A. Jones, and I come here because I'm a winner, too. Yeah, wouldn't you like to listen to her for an hour? I mean, come on. Hey everybody, my name is Jesse Melton and I'm actually running in this district against Ted Deutsch. I am an evangelical business owner and I achieved the American dream in this country from the ground up. I grew up in a double wide trailer and this is the only country in the world where it doesn't matter where you start, but you can end up anywhere. So I take it very personally when I see people calling for boycotting of businesses, BDS, an attack on the Jewish community is an attack on all of us. There are two forces right now. There's a force of creation and preservation, and there's a force of control and destruction. Jexit is, is a great movement, but it's not the only movement. This movement is a movement of God. It's bigger than all of us. And God moves towards people. And in this movement, we're going to have to talk to people that don't look like us, that don't vote like us, and we're going to have to join together to achieve preservation of our republic, preservation of our freedom, preservation of everything, and it's going to take unity because whatever is unified can never be destroyed. All right? God bless you all. Thank you. All right, whenever you do anything like that, you open it up for a lot of people. I want, to, I want to mention that Laura Loomer is also running for office. And there's a couple of guys here. Jim Pruden is running for office. 
and Michael Blooming is running for office. So we love people running for office, but we can't have anybody at the microphone. We got a lot of stuff going on. What is that? Michael Velarde's running for office too. It's great having everybody here because we want you to do that, but this isn't uh, the exact time for this. The organizers selected people to represent them. But right now, you ready, Billy? Knock them out. What a great event. You having fun? Yeah? Besides learning a lot. Okay, well, we're going to increase the fun a little bit. All right, you ready?
Uh, as I've said through the afternoon, the uh, rallies like this are very organic. And when you have something like that that touches our hearts, our emotions, it's time to make a little transition in the program. We're going to bring up our keynote. We'll have speakers after the keynote. But on that ride to that place that Billy just took us, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Slick Siggy Flicker. Let's go, Jersey Girl. Hello, hello, hello. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Hello. So every time I speak, I say, what, what is my goal? My goal today is to inspire every single person to leave here and do something. I don't care what it is, but to do something. I am the daughter of a Holocaust scholar and survivor. My father's name is Dr. Mordechai Paldiel. He ran the Righteous Gentile Division at Yad Vashem for over 25 years. He was saved by a Catholic priest in Evian, France during the Holocaust. And to date, my father has honored over 19,000 righteous Gentiles. The first thing that I would like to do is thank all the non-Jews who stand with the Jewish people and the state of Israel. And that is a tremendous amount of people. Recently, I visited Israel and I took my best friends, the Grecos, famous chef, B. Bobby Flay on national TV with his eggplant parmesan. He knows all about super sod and prosciutto right. and mozzarella and everything. And we were supposed to go to Italy. And I said, Dave, you know what? This summer we're going to go to Israel. And he said, why? I don't, I don't want to die. <laughs> why would I go to Israel? And I said, we've been to Positano and Manore and Maggiore and Capri. Italy is beyond beautiful. But Jesus never walked Italy. Come to Israel. We went to Israel, we visited the Jewish sites, and we went over to the Church of Annunciation in Nazareth. We went to the Sea of Galilee where Jesus walked the water with Peter. We went to Jesus' tomb, and that trip was the most incredible trip that the Greco family has ever experienced. Today, my friends, and the reason why I tell you this, is today, my friends, we're flooded with fake news, false narratives, everywhere you go. Everywhere, you can't escape it. I grew up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And a very long time ago, there used to be a store called Bamberger's. Remember that? And I always tell people this, everywhere I go, I was complaining to my mom, we were immigrants, we came here from Israel, and I said, I just wanna be American. I just wanna wear a Ralph Lauren shirt with a little, you know, the American flag, and I just want to fit in. And I remember being in a store, my mom used to say, Sigalit, if you want merchandise in the store, where do you see yourself? Over there on the 80% off rack, or over there where they keep all the fine jewelry in, behind the bevel glass? And I said, duh. I see myself over there. And she said, good then know your worth. And until you do act as if, practice makes perfect, but know your worth. And I thought about that and I went, wow, okay. And once I started knowing my worth, being young, I raised the bar so high that only the people who could reach that bar were allowed to be part of my life. I got rid of toxic people. I was able to recognize that if somebody didn't call me on Wednesday, that person was not gonna see me on Saturday. I knew that a man's rejection was God's protection. I'd find out later he didn't wanna have kids or a gonorrhea, whatever it was. It wasn't meant for that time. I learned that in life, every time you fall flat on your face, you need to stand right back up and fight through it. And people used to say to me, how do you have such courage? How do you have such chutzpah? I said, well, my mother taught me to know my worth. And on Friday night when we used to have kiddish, my father, the gefilte fish, the ro he used to say the prayers, and he used to repeat story after story about the Holocaust, 
and the history of the Jews. And I used to say, Lama, I just want to go to a party and see Scott Minnick. Lama! And my father would say, because a nation that forgets its past has no future. And I used to say, but I live in Cherry Hill. Dad, I know the Holocaust story is very important. And I feel for any Holocaust survivor. But I'm a Jew living in Cherry Hill. How bad can it go for me? I'm in the United States of America. And I continued, but I always remembered what my father said. And I made it on national TV. I had my own show on VH1. I was on Wendy Williams for four years, Dr. Phil, and Good Morning America. Any show that's out there, I was on it. And then one day I made it on to Housewives of New Jersey. Woo! You know what they say when you plan, God laughs. 90% in life is showing up. And I said to my husband, honey, should I do it? And he goes, absolutely not. <laughs> Siggy, it's all fake news and false narratives. They, it, they edit, they slice, they dice. You're gonna walk out, your boobs are gonna be behind you. You're not gonna recognize yourself. And I said, okay, come on, how bad can it be? I'm doing it. And I did it. And the whole time I hated every second of it. Because what you saw in one minute, it took four hours to film. And they could take you and say, you are ugly, your children are ugly, your husband's ugly. And the minute you respond and say, hey, excuse my language, screw you. You'll see a scene that says, hi, can I have a cup of coffee? Screw you. <laughs> People would say, Siggy, what happened to you? Ladies and gentlemen, it's exactly what they do to the president of the United States of America today. <laughs> now on that show, I used to say to my mom and dad, I was the first Jewish Jersey housewife of New Jersey. I had Dr. Mordechai Paldiel on the show doing Kiddush, talking about the Holocaust. A lot of people ask me, how did you get your dad to spill for Housewives of New Jersey? I said, every time they put the microphone on him, I said, Dad, it's for the History Channel. Don't worry. <laughs> and I looked at my mom and said, Lama, I can't stand it. I know I'm going in for five hours, and they're going to... They're going to torture me. They broke down my spirit. There wasn't one day that I wasn't soggy on that show. Aww. And one day, casual conversation with a person that I'm not getting along with, which is actually good news for a show like that. They don't want women saying, you're so gorgeous. No, you're so gorgeous. No, you're so gorgeous. No, they want drama. I said, I'm going to Michelle's Jexit event. I'm making that up. And somebody said to me, I don't like Michelle, a woman that I'm not getting along with. And I said, why don't you mind your own business? You've never met Michelle. And she looked at me and said, Hitler wouldn't have killed me. Does that make him a good person? Now, at that moment, I turned around and I said, you're not taking that out. If anybody would have referenced the KKK or the LGBTQ community, the New York Times would have had a Hava Nagila Hava party. <laughs> You're keeping this in, and I went to my Abba, and I my Abba. Somebody referenced Hitler in casual conversation, and he said, Siggy, remember all those years? You stand up. There's nothing casual about the atrocities of the Holocaust. There's nothing casual about Hitler's name. There's nothing casual about 20 million people, 6 million of our own, dead. A million and a half kids. And so I stood up and I didn't back down and I resigned for, from the show. I saved my family, I saved my marriage, I saved everything. But the point was is, when you're on a show like that, they say to you, calm down, don't, don't react. I said, no, I'm going to react. Today, the greatest crime in history is not violence. It's the fake media and it's silent. I'm asking everybody not to be a loud mouth like me. But I'm letting you know today there are radicals everywhere and they come in every color and in every religion. Don't judge somebody by the color of their skin. Find out who they were influenced by growing up. Some were influenced by Reverend Wright, some Farrakhan, some Al Sharpton, some other radicals. Today we have North Korea in China, they're killing people every day and you don't know about it. We have radicals everywhere, but now, my friends, 
they're here. You've got two choices. Are you going to back down and leave this world for your future grandchildren as a z no future, no America? Or are you going to stand up for your right to be free and live in this country and look at evil in the eye and defeat it? And once you start to look evil in the eye, it gets so easy, I promise you. I get attacked all the time, I say, please. For those of you who haven't been to Israel, 71 years what Israel has accomplished, I can guarantee you that no country can accomplish that in 7,100 years. I just came back with my father from the 75th liberation of Auschwitz. And I sat there with Holocaust survivor as we had to go to Mangala and tour the place. My husband and I couldn't get out of bed for three days. When you're there and you realize Auschwitz I and Auschwitz II, they ran it like a factory. And how did it start? Fake news. Hitler used to send out brochures that when Jews were gonna to go to the ghettos, it's gonna be wonderful. There was gonna be work camps. They would be able to leave on Thursday. There's a, if they played the violin, there's or He sent out brochures to, all, to the whole world as Jews stood there, didn't know. And at that time, when America, when Roosevelt found out, everybody sat on their hands. It wasn't until 1945, but 1938, the world knew that there was a genocide happening in Europe. We don't have years to wait now. Anti-Semitism has nothing to do with Jews. You can't call me dirty because I take five baths a day. You can't call me a kike because nothing offends me. I'm standing here because I'm gonna be the voice for those six million people and I'm not backing down. It takes courage and chutzpah to stand alone. And once you start moving in that direction, you will see that other people will start following you. If your goal in life is to be sheep, be sheep. We are from the kingdom of Judah. We have been part of Israel a thousand years before Jesus Christ was there. And let me tell you something. Any nation, any empire, any individual that has ever gone up against the Jewish people or the state of Israel, has lost. You don't hear about the Assyrian Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Roman Empire, Cyrus the Great, Alex the Great. You don't hear about Hitler, he's rolling around in his grave. He wanted an Aryan nation. Has anybody here been to Germany lately? It's not an Aryan nation, my friends. And he didn't, so this is how you have to start answering people. He couldn't keep me in the oven, you know why? because we are survivors. I want you to think of that, in 1948, my grandfather came from Iraq. He was used as a spy in the war. Six of the strongest nations attacked us. No IDF, no Air Force, no tanks. We beat them, how? God. In 1967, when I was born in a bomb shelter, my father was fighting during the Six Day War. Three of the strongest armies attacked us. We beat them in six days. In 1973, when my soldiers were davening on the highest of highest Jewish holidays, imagine if we were to attack anybody during Ramadan. Oh, the New York Times, another Hava Nagila Hava. Our soldiers were davening surprise attack. How did we win? God. Yes. My friends, today Israel has one of the best IDFs in the world. We're strong. The Arabs have 32 countries, the Christians have 18. We have one little tiny homeland that's smaller than the size of New Jersey. Do you really think that there is a war about land? If you do, raise your hand. This is not about land. We got land with no oil. You use a phone? Do you use a computer? Research it, Intel 8066 processor. That little microchip went into the first IBM computer. It was considered the heart and the brain of a computer. It was revolutionized. 
every phone, every computer, Waze, WhatsApp, robotics. When they hate, Israelis create. We created an extra skeleton, skeleton where our body goes into a skeleton, a paraplegic, and they can run, hike, and bike. We created a little pill, like an Advil. You swallow it, it takes a picture of your inside and sends data to a computer. Rockets go into Israel daily. They live with this noise in Israel. 15 seconds to get into a cement bomb shelter. But you know why we keep winning? Because we're survivors. So now, to my American Jewish friends, may you be like the Christian community here. May you stand up for what is right and what is true. When somebody shows you who they are, trust them the first time. Don't wait until they terrorize. Anti-Semitism is all about taking our constitution. What's our con Michelle taught me all this. <laughs> Judea Christian values. So if we, if people are gonna attack the policemen, thank you for your service and God bless you. If people are gonna attack our policemen because they wanna enforce those Judeo-Christian values, what belief system do we have? If our country doesn't have a value, then what are we? Venezuela, one of the most beautiful countries, rich, in, rich, rich economy, and then boom, socialism. People are going through garbage cans just to find a sandwich there. China, North Korea, Iran. How beautiful was it to see the people of Iran stepping alongside the American flag and the Israeli flag because the people of Iran want freedom. But guess what? We have it. But we're so, we're so taking it for granted that it's like, no, well, you know what? It'll never happen here. It's the same thing that the people who went through the Holocaust said the same thing, it will never happen. And then they're taking their shoes off, their coats off, their gold out. It's time for us to stand up and fight back. If I could do it, we have an obligation to this country. I am a proud American. I have an obligation to defend the Constitution. I have, an, I have an obligation to look at the flag and pledge my allegiance. And I'm saying to you, when you find that inner line in you and everyone has it, it's time to stand up. It's time to vote people like Laura Loomer in. It's time to say, if you don't have Judeo-Christian values, you're not for me. You're not for me. You're not for me. Radicals have a goal. And remember this, they want to infiltrate, populate, dominate. They never want to assimilate, and they never want to educate. I just came back from Europe. What's happening in Europe, I wish, I wish that I could bring in footage. People's flags are being disrespected. Policemen are not allowed to go into certain areas. There's chaos, there's no law, and there's no order. The only reason why anybody wants open borders so they can get illegal votes. If I had to come in here the legal way and show my medical records, take a course and learn English, know how many stars on the American flag and learn a little bit of American history, so should everybody else. When I pick up my daughter in school, I have to go through two security guards to get to the front door. And then I have to sign out her name and I have to show ID. You gotta have ID everywhere you go. But you don't want have to have ID or you don't have to be vetted for when coming into the greatest country in the world, the United States of America? I don't think so. We need to stand up and we need to be proud. Because if we don't, who is gonna fill up this room in 20 years from now? So I'm begging everybody to find their voice and whatever you can do, whatever you can do, go out there because today radicals are a little bit different. They have a partner, a matchmaker. It's the fake media. People ask me, why does the president have to tweet all day? I say, duh, because he doesn't have a platform. I mean, duh, and they say, oh, 
Oh my God, Siggy. Oh, you're such a powerful woman. How can you stand him? I said, really? Because when Bill Clinton used a cigar in Monaco, you still voted for him too. And do you remember Jennifer Flowers and Paula Jones? And remember gorgeous, the gorgeous John F. Kennedy? When he cheated on Jackie O and Marilyn Monroe. I didn't see an outrage. The man bleeds red, white, and blue. He's standing up for the Constitution. And guess what? He's not eloquent. He doesn't have great delivery. You know why? He's not a politician. And a man who can't be bought is a corrupt swamp's biggest nightmare. So now, you're going to say to me, I want to say, I don't care whether you're a Democrat or not. I know plenty of Democrats. What I'm asking you to do is stand up. When somebody's anti-American and you want to be a Democrat, it's on you. I don't care. I'm leaving here. I'm going to Trattoria Romano with my husband. It doesn't affect me how you vote. I know what I have to do and teach my kids to do the same thing. But stand up. Stand up. When you see hate, say, wait, 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 why? Look like that brilliant lady said, look at who you're voting in and make sure it's the right person. Exactly. And you know what, if your friends say, no politics, no this, well, I'm sorry. I'm 52 years old, I have never witnessed what we are witnessing right now as a country. This is not the time to be quiet. And my, my kids say, but mom, you're a love maker, you're a matchmaker. I said, yes, Sophie, but I wanna teach you and Joshua, Tyler and Olivia something. Love is great, love is equal. I don't judge who loves who or who loves what. But you must know that evil does exist. And just like my father said, if we don't take care of it immediately, it will manifest itself in our reality. Learn to recognize evil, look at it in the eye, and defeat it. Thank you so much, Phil. And remember, we need more Laura Loomer. She's only in her 20s, I'm 52. She's 20 something. Bless the United States of America and may God please protect our president and his family. Thank you so much. Oh my God, is she great or what? Yes, well, give her a big hand. We're so glad to have her on our Jexit team as our spokesperson. And also, Jexit is uniting forces with Lexit, Latinos exiting. So we would like to introduce Martin from Lexit. Please give him a hand. He came all the way here to speak with us and he's on board with our movement. Thank you. Well, you know, we, we've given the veterans a shout out, but we haven't given a shout out to our police officers. Blue Lives Matter. Blue Lives Matter. Please pray for them. They're under attack every day. We need to pray for them because they keep the law in order. My name is Martin Bermudez. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a veteran, and I'm a proud American who's living the American dream. I'm the Florida representative for the real Lexit movements, Latinos exiting the Democrat party. Hispanics are conservative. We're pro-God, pro-family, pro-life, pro-America, and yes, pro-Israel. I want to thank Jackson for giving me the honor to speak today about the hate that we're witnessing in our local communities and all over America towards our Jewish brothers and sisters. I stand here to tell the Jewish community that the Christian, the evangelical, the Catholic community is in solidarity with our Jewish brothers and sisters. And we will not be silent anymore. We're going to fight back against the constant attack against us by the liberal left. To tell you a little bit about myself, I was born in El Salvador. We fled the Civil War in 1981. During those days, coming to America was a huge privilege. Nothing was taken for granted. We were grateful and excited to become Americans because to become Americans, there is no skin color to be Americans. The Democrat Party has come up with a huge scam and it's called white privilege. Their only goal is to create hate and divide us. When we came to America, it was the white people that helped us the most. I am proof that white privilege is a scam. 
between my two sisters and I, we have two community college degrees, three university degrees, a master's degree, doctors of podiatry medicine, two successful businesses, and a military service in the Army. My father's first real job came when he was hired by a Jewish American, Mr. M Marvin Hullop. He was a builder in Miami like our president. I'm always grateful for that. You often hear that Jewish people are evil. They're not evil. I know because I have a lot of friends and they're wonderful people. When I sold insurance, most of my clients were Jewish. They were kind to me. They never looked at the color of my skin. They would always tell me to keep pushing forward. And they would always tell me, you're a sharp kid. Keep, keep, keep moving forward. Most of them were grandparents. And, uh, and what's funny is that the, the wives would try to hook me up with the granddaughters, but I didn't qualify because I wasn't Jewish. <laughs> they liked me so much that I would play tennis with them on Saturdays. So can you imagine a 30-year-old brown kid playing uh, tennis with a bunch of um, retired Jewish, <laughs> uh, retired people? I trust for those days. The hate against the Jewish people goes hand in hand with the hateful white privilege narrative coming out of the Democrats. The liberal left wants us to forget the huge positive contributions the Jewish people have made to society. Contributions to medicine, science, the arts, humanities, education. 176 of the Nobel Peace Prize winners are Jewish. If you go to any hospital, any universities, you're bound to see a building that was donated by a Jewish person. Another big contribution is the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. The founders of this country were so intrigued with those first five books, so intrigued that they studied it and studied it. And so much that some of the moral principles of the Torah can be found in the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and our beautiful contribution, uh, Constitution. These three documents are under attack by the Democrats, and we cannot let them change the Constitution because it will be over for America. Socialism is only one election away. We cannot let this happen. We have to vote people out like Bernie Sanders out of Congress and, and bring in people like Laura Loomer, that she's running for, for Congress on C21. And I'm proud here to say that the Real Lexit movement has fully endorsed Laura Loomer for Congress 21. And we need to support people like her. I've known her for three years. I followed her on Twitter. I, I, I told her that she has bigger cojones than most of us. And in closing, in 1998, I went to go see one of, one of, my, uh, one of my clients who was a Holocaust survivor. He spoke at the Holocaust Memorial in Miami Beach. He gave a beautiful speech. And what I vividly remember about his speech is what he said at the end. And he said, should there be another Holocaust, should another Holocaust happen, is because you let it happen. It's because we let it happen. And I'm here to tell you that we're not gonna let it happen. Thank you, God bless you. Okay, we have two more amazing speakers, and then uh, Billy will be back and close out our, uh, our wonderful afternoon together. Uh, I think I just saw Dr. Jane. Are you there? Yes, hello. Dr. Jane Ruby, why don't you stand up, say hello. Um, you, she's, she's from uh, up Washington, D.C. area, has a show, came on our, our trip. I think our folks handed out some business cards that have our trip in May. We're going in May, Jerusalem Day. Um, got a select group for a national security tour. And our partner on this trip is Jexit. The ladies and men of Jexit are coming with us to Israel May 18 through 29. So if you want to be on a phenomenal trip with a tremendous briefing, come with us. You can see us afterwards. You know what I noticed about this event? I've been around a bit and, and been to events that the other side puts on. 
and usually the police are all over the place and uh, riot gear and stones and rocks flying around. This is a family. Everybody's having fun, laughing, singing, dancing. Isn't that amazing how people can come together? Just an absolute wonderful group of people. That's indicative of everybody on the side of the Judeo-Christian life and, and world uh, values. So, the next speaker has traveled from Austria to be in the United States on a speaking tour about her book. She experienced an unbelievable uh, situation. You can talk to her afterwards. Everyone's limited to five minutes here except our keynote and, and our opener. But you want to talk to her and uh, she'll tell you a little bit about her story. Please welcome a dear friend of ours from Europe, Elizabeth Savage Wolf. Yes, I came all the way from Austria. I hope you guys know where Austria is. It's not Australia, we don't have any kangaroos, except for in zoos, of course. Um, I am a diplomat's daughter, which explains my English because I did grow up in the United States, in New York and Chicago. I also grew up in Iran during the revolution, during the Iranian revolution, the Islamic revolution in 1979. I was in Iraq in 1982-83. I went to church on Christmas Eve in Iraq in Baghdad. Like I said, I went to school here in the United States in Chicago, Academy of the Sacred Heart, where I was blessed to study the United States Constitution. And it was this studying of the United States Constitution that I believe that the United States Constitution is the greatest political document ever written, ever. Not the European Constitution, not the European Union Constitution that no one has ever read and no one understands, but the U.S. Constitution. And in the U.S. Constitution, it's the First Amendment that is very close and dear to my heart. Because you see, I believed, I was very naive, I believed that I had a right to free speech, not only here in the United States, but also in Europe, also in Austria, my native country. I was very wrong. I was silenced in 2009 when I dared to speak out about what was happening to my country, the Islamization of my country. I taught seminars about Islam that were fully sourced and I was taken to court for hate speech, on a hate speech charge. I fought this charge and with the help of a lot of American donors, I was able to raise enough money to fight this all the way to the European Court of Human Rights. Unfortunately for me and my fellow Europeans, I lost. I have been silenced. I can no longer speak out in Europe, but I have made it my mission to speak out here in America because here, I am protected by the First Amendment. Thank God for that. Now let me tell you, it's become very familiar in the last years that people all of a sudden, people that are close to me, that are in the movement, that people all of a sudden disappear. They may not be physically harmed yet, although I will tell you about my dear friend Phil Haney, who only a few hours ago mysteriously was mysteriously found with a bullet in his chest. He's now disappeared. Probably one of the greatest lovers of Israel has now been silenced. We don't know what happened, but he is gone, he's disappeared. Laura Loomer has disappeared. She was on Twitter. Katie Hopkins, is tr people are trying to make her disappear. She's fighting back, just like Laura. You have to understand that it doesn't always take a bullet in the chest. People disappear all the time. And I find myself saying, 
Where is this friend gone? Where is he gone? Where is she gone? Why don't I hear from them anymore? Does this sound eerily familiar to what happened in my home country in the 1930s? Now back then, people were too afraid to stand out. And that's the same thing that we're witnessing all over again. People are being silenced. They're silenced on the internet. They're silenced by the media. And it's all about fear. I have never been afraid, and I will, I will continue to stand up for what is right. Again, you must not be afraid. You still have your constitution, you still have your First Amendment. We have to stop being afraid to speak. Be brave, be bold. They may have silenced me in Europe, but I will continue to speak out. Remember, dear friends, that while freedom of speech is disappearing here in the US, you still have the freedom to fight for freedom. Treat every day like it is September 1st, 1939. Thank you very much for turning up today. Thank you very much for having me. God bless America. And long live the First Amendment. Fight for your Constitution. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Is there a Michael Berger in the house? Michael Berger? Michael Berger? Come on up here. Michael Berger. I have your wallet, Michael Berger. You're going to need your wallet. <laughs> Michael Berger, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, you can't speak. Uh, all right. I was just doing that to get the guy his pro. Isn't that horrible, you men, when you, your wallet's not there? Horrible feeling. Uh, Michelle is going to introduce our, uh, our final speaker. Our final speaker is a great man of God who contacted us and has a, uh, who hosts a, a show, a radio show in Miami called Alma Vision, 87.7 I believe, and he's a pastor and he's a huge supporter of Israel and the Jewish people. He did an incredible Spanish um, uh, advertisement on his show to um, promote today's rally and we would like to hear from Pastor Daniel. surrounded by Jewish people, you can feel God. You can feel God. I remember being a kid. I'm an American born in Cuba. Thank you. And I remember being a kid living in a very happy place, like here. Feeling what I'm feeling here. And one day, everything changed. From one day to the other one, everything changed. And then it was too late to do anything. I hope, I hope you guys have ears that hear. Because what's happening in the United States right now, I've never seen it before. I've been here 60 years. I came when I was 12 years old. Now I belong to a group that in Miami they call the third age. Look at this. There is first age, second age, and third age. Now I belong to the third age. And I noticed that things start happening to me. And it is the first thing that start happening when I started turning gray completely is that I forget things. I forget things. And there's another thing. There's two things that happen to all of us, I think. The first one is that I forget things. The second one I want to tell you, but I already forgot about it. Yes. 
I fix something to share with you people. I brought it, but I forgot where I put it. <laughs> so what can I tell you? Listen, I told our president, Donald Trump, the first time that I got close to him, I told him, Mr. President, I just want you to know, and I want to tell you guys here also, that you were born to be our 45th president. Yes. Later on, a guy told me, no, he made a lot of millions. Yeah, I know that. Of course I know that. He's a successful businessman. But that's exactly why he had to be our 45th president. It could have been nothing else. Nobody else could have done it. Imagine if Hillary Clinton would have got elected in 2016. Where would we be now? Amazing. I heard the young lady that is 52 talking. She was right 100%. Listen, I have a radio station in Miami. It's called Alma Vision, 87.7. Alma means soul, so it, it is soul vision, soul vision. We need to get together and count for this election. There's a lot of Jewish people that are hooked to the Democratic Party. And I tell you because I live in a place where 99% are Jewish. I live on a place called Emerald Hills in Hollywood. Yes, and when I put a Trump sign, they all look at me like, hey. A guy told me once, I'm a never Trumper. And then I tell him, we cannot walk together, neighbor. God bless you, take, take a hike. <laughs> but he told me like that, I'm a never Trumper. And I say, do you understand that anybody else couldn't do the job that he's doing right now? And you know why? Because he's not a politician. He don't have to tell you what you want to hear. When I was a kid, my father showed me that the politician has to say what the people want to hear. The businessman has to compete, right? And the Christian has to be in touch with God. And we are Judeo-Christian, we love Israel. We go to Israel two times a year. I remember we used to go one time. It, in one occasion, they treat me so good that they made me an ambassador of Israel <laughs> as a gift, you know? And, and I was so thankful that I was at this banquet that they invited us in Tel Aviv, and I was there eating, and I asked God, I said, Lord, what else can I do for Israel? You know, I love Israel. I love the Jewish people. What else can I do? And the Lord told me, come two times. <laughs> so when they gave me the, the microphone, I said, look, I'm so thankful. I love you guys. But I pray and the Lord told me to come two times. And they applaud me and they say, hey, yes. So praise the Lord. We love you guys. We need to, we need, you guys need to know, please, that we Christians love you guys. We're well aware that we are Judeo-Christians. Okay, and not only the Torah was written by the Jewish people. I want to please correct somebody that said something like that. The whole Bible was written by Jewish people. The 12 apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ were Jewish people. So we have big reason to love you. Maybe you guys have some reason not to love us. But believe me, not us. Because among the Christian, there is two groups, okay? And you need to know that. The one that call themselves Christians, we are the real ones. The other one that call themselves by their religion, that's a problem, okay? I don't know about them. But us, we love you guys. God bless you. Remember Trump 2020, we need to vote for Trump. Hallelujah! I'd like to see that more often. And my radio is available to all you guys to do anything to re-elect our President Trump. God bless you all. Thank you.
God bless America. And we're coming down to uh, the final part of our non-political uh, afternoon here. Standing against anti-Semitism. Could I have all the Jexit board members and workers up here, please, for a final uh, hurrah. Come on up. And if everyone can turn to the east a little bit and look at the uh, gentlemen and gentle ladies in blue and give them a, a round of applause for being here with us today. Thank you very much, Boca Raton Police Department. We appreciate your service. Don't give anybody tickets because nobody followed the two-hour rule around here, please. All right, all the Jackson folks, um, and I'm going to ask, and Billy's going to play. And you hang around. There's kosher hot dogs. There's ice cream. There's bocce ball over there for the Italians, and we got all kinds of things going on. Michelle, could you please come and uh, close us in uh, your vision for where this goes for the rest of 2020? Our vision is to help educate, to make our Judeo-Christian values great again, to be a voice for our Jewish people, and to continue to um, spread the word on how important it is that we do re-elect the greatest president to, for Israel and the Jewish people ever in the history. Yes. Thank you everybody for coming and supporting us. And uh, you can find us on JexitUSA.org. Our Twitter is Jexit4, the number four Trump. And our Facebook page where you can come and, and interact with like-minded people is hashtag Jexit. Please donate. Oh, Instagram. Instagram is Jexit2020. And we'd love if you want to donate to our organization to help us continue to do these rallies and to make a difference, we welcome your any general, any any amount, 10, 20, 30 dollars. Merchandise is in the back table. Um, we really appreciate your support. Thank you. Yeah, this is the table, please, and, and write a check for them. This is all coming out of their pocket. Thank you. You are dismissed, and uh, God bless America. God bless this. Thank you. Thank you.